Is everything OK? OK, so then we can start. So please welcome, uh, how do you, please welcome Petr to Phosphor G. <laughs> So good morning, everybody, once again. Uh, thank you all for coming. I'm happy to see so many people here, despite the open bar at, at this unfortunate slot. Uh, I would like to talk to you today about OpenMap tiles, what's new with the project, and what are our plans for the, for the future. So for those of you that don't know, the OpenMap tiles is a set of open source tools for creating and working with vector tiles and vector maps. Uh, it is estimated that uh, more than 200 million people see uh, the open map tiles somewhere on the web or in mobile applications every month because companies like Carto or Elastic or even NASA are using it in, s in their products and applications. Uh, the whole thing is open source. You can go to the website or to the GitHub and look at the source code and documentation. And, and it's a good starting point if you, if you want to know, uh, learn more about maps and vector maps in, in uh, general. Uh, there are three main parts of the, of the OpenMap Tiles uh, project. Uh, probably the most important part is the vector tile schema, which uh, defines what layers and attributes are, are in the vector tiles themselves. And uh, this is the difference between vector tiles and raster tiles, because in vector tiles you actually have the features, their geometry, and, and their attributes. So there's a lot more that you can see visually, which is also good for interactivity and, and other things. Uh, the schema is designed to be to be independent of the source data. So although it's standard to use OpenStreetMap, there are s other institutions and organizations that are uh, transforming their own data into, into OpenMap tiles, schema vector tiles, such as Luxembourg National Geoportal or uh, Cartographic Institute of Catalonia and, and many other. And uh, this has the advantage that you can use the OpenMap tiles stack and tools to take your own data and use parts of this stack to, to create the vector tiles quite, quite easily. So, so uh, the open source part of the project is, is the set of tools for taking uh, and importing the data from OpenStreetMap, Natural Earth, and, and Wikidata for, for languages, and uh, transforming all this into, into a set of, of uh, Mapbox vector tiles encoded as, as PBF, and putting them inside an MB tiles container. And the last part is a set of prepared vector styles, uh, which, are, which are defined against the vector tile schema. So even if you do not use OpenStreetMap data, if you respect the, the schema, the styles are still compatible. So it's, it's really, really good uh, that these parts are interchangeable, and it's quite fast to, to start with the tiles and create your own map quite easily. And, uh, once again, with vector styles, it, the, the nice feature is that uh, you don't have the visual style like uh, hard coded in the in the tiles. You have the, the the actual data and geometries. So just by changing one one line in a style, you immediately get a different visual map from the from the same tiles from the same raw data. So over the last year, uh, we've done several releases of of open map tiles. In the version 3.8, the, the main change was, was uh, were some improvements on the transportation layer, especially especially the vertical ordering in very complicated uh, crossroads. In the version 3.9, we added docs and peers, and we already had uh, multilingual support for place names in 63 languages, I think. And in 3.9, we added multilingual streets, so even even those can have multiple languages now. And in the latest release, which, which we did this, this June, we made some improvements to, do, to the water layers and, and uh, updated boundaries and added some, some minor points of interest. For the, for the next version, which we plan to do by the end of this year, the main goal is to make contributions easier because the whole project, mainly for historical reasons, is quite complicated at the moment. There's a lot of different repositories and Docker containers, and it's quite, quite complicated for newcomers to start uh, working with the project. So our goal is to, is to clean everything up and, and reduce this, this entry barrier for, for new people to get the project running even more fast. So I encourage all of you to, to go to the GitHub or to the, to the website 
to try to start the project. There, there's a script that you can use to create your own, your own tiles of, of your country, for example. And uh, everything is documented, and we would love some feedback about how, how it went, if there were any troubles during, during uh, this process. Or if you just want to look at the tiles and use them, there are downloads available that we pre-generate uh, for, for every, every country, every continent, and, and some cities. So you can just download this and, and use it in your, in your application just to quickly see if, if this is for you or not. Uh, we also have a, have a cloud hosting solution. If you do not want to download anything, you just can go to Meptara Cloud. I'll mention it later again. And, and you can just try it on, on the fly without downloading and setting up server. So that's even even faster solution. So what's our, our project vision for the, for the future? The, the vision of Open Map Tiles is to have a universal map schema that is useful for everybody. We do not want to put everything in there because then the, the size of the tiles would, would increase too much and the tiles are downloading to the web browsers so we do not want to have the tiles too large. But, but we want to keep the, the schema at the right size so that it contains enough to, to have the base map like useful for almost, for almost anybody. But of course there are some special applications when you need more. So, so we have prepared an example on the, on the GitHub which takes a single, which creates, it's the Open Map Task Skiing repository. Uh, there, there's an example how to create one additional layer from OpenStreetMap that contains just some skiing related features like ski slopes and points of interest. So uh, you don't have to generate the whole world. You can take the, the prepared extract and then only generate the one layer that you need, which is obviously much, much faster than doing the whole world once again. Uh, there is a video available from the State of the Map 2018 where we did a step-by-step -step guide on, on this. And uh, there are some real-world <coughs> examples of people already doing this. There, there's, for example, the Open Infrastructure Map, which uses the core Open Web Map Tiles as a base map, and then they process only the uh, Power Grid uh, related related uh, layers from OpenStreetMap as an additional layer. So, so they, they can visualize power lines and uh, electricity poles and, and things like that. Uh, OpenCMap is doing something similar with sea navigation and, and there are many applications. And as always, there's something in between. <laughs> so uh, there are some use cases that, that repeat often, but it's still not worth to include this in the, in the core tiles. So for example, uh, we are working on hiking thematic layers which contain like hiking trails and uh, guided posts, points of interest. And this is something that uh, comes up often in, in different groups of applications, but uh, it's still not worth including in the, in the core open map tiles because then we would, uh, we would uh, like slow down all other applications that don't need this. So uh, we are working on different groups of thematic layers. So then you can just select the core open map tiles and those thematic layers that, that you actually need for your specific application. And uh, uh, traditionally, the vector tiles were defined and, and prototype uh, with web mercator projection in, in mind, but uh, we are working on modifying the Open Map Tiles uh, pipeline, and we've actually already done this, uh, that so, so that it's possible to create uh, vector tiles in different coordinate systems, which is which is often useful if you have some some local data from government or some local organizations in in a specific uh, coordinate system, and you d you do not want to reproject or 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 uh, warp this this data into uh, into Web Mercator, which is often not not a possibility. And uh, the, the nice thing about the vector tiles is that it actually does not contain any information about the coordinate systems. The vector tiles themselves just encode the geometry. Pretty, it's pretty similar to the, to the raster, actually. And what we have to, have to change is, is the rest, basically. <laughs> so instead of putting it into MB tiles, which is by specification only Mercator, we use GeoPackage which gives us the full possibility to define a tile metric set with different resolutions and 
uh, different origins, even if, if you need to. And uh, we utilize the work in progress vector task specifications, sp sorry, specification extension of the, of the geo package, which we hope will be standardized soon. And then we use open layers, and it's, it's uh, possible to correctly define, define the grid, including everything, and the open layers just uh, displays the vector tiles in, in the correct positions with the correct coordinates. So it's then very easy to, to add WMTS or WMS as, as an additional layer. And everything is in that specific projection. There, there's no hacking to Mercator and back or, or nothing like that. And uh, it's still possible to use the Mapbox GLJS styles because there's, there's an open source OL Mapbox style library that can take the uh, GLJSON style and apply the styling to the open layers layer. So it can visually be pretty much almost the same as the Mapbox GLJS. Uh, you can go to the MapTower cloud uh, right now and try it there because we have processed the whole world into WGS84 and it's available there. There's also ready to use open layers example, including the tile grid definition. And, uh, and we also rasterize these tiles server side, so we can give you the XYZ of these tiles, WMTS and Static Maps API. So you can just yeah, go to this URL and try it yourself. Uh, this is obviously not Mercator. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the Nutella Cloud is free for non-commercial use. So you, if you need, want to use it just in your application or your demo project, you can do it for free. And if you, if you want to try it in some commercial application, you can use a special Phos4G coupon that, is, uh, that should be available, I think, till the end of this week. And uh, if you use it during the checkout, you will get first month for free. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's everything. So thank you for your attention. And if there are any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you very much. You took less time than expected, so we can take questions now. We're running very good on schedule. Nothing? Come on. Thanks for the talk. It's really interesting. Um, I'm in particular interested in when this uh, tool for the uh, custom uh, coordinate systems is, is coming out. You said the, or it was written. It was, it's like a work in progress kind of project. But you already made some success with that, I, I've seen. So yeah, we are we are still working on it, and some some parts of it will probably uh, go back to the Open Map Tiles repository itself. But uh, we are still thinking about how how to do this cleanly, like not to uh, because it's a, it's a modification of of the pipeline, and uh, we do not want to complicate the project unnecessarily too much because the Web Mercator is still what most people want and expect. So we need to think how to do this like carefully. Anymore? I'm, I'm curious on what's the weirdest use of your tiles that you have seen. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> people want to put uh, entire world into s people want to put entire world into a single tile, like for printing posters and showing uh, the complete network of entire. Area. They want everything in a single tile. Yeah, it's actually a repeated use case. They, they are asking if it's possible to fit everything into like Zoom level three, every road, every building, because they want to print posters. So, yeah, that's not possible. <laughs> so you s you said that the stack is a bit complicated uh, today for contribut contributors and people using open open map tiles. So what kind of simplifications are you, are you looking at? Well, uh, the first thing, th there are too many repositories because historically uh, we wanted to have auto-builded Docker containers and we had to have one Docker file per repository. So 
that's the first step. You have to clone a lot of different repositories, so this can be put together and and like combined because some of the imports are quite similar. So it can be like we need to look at everything that's going right now in 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 the code and revise every dependency and every import and if it's still needed to work this way or if it can be like simplified and put together into more compact solution. Okay. Um yeah, we, we were talking briefly before the session started. So um I'm from the UK and um you mentioned about Ordnance Survey um creating a open Zoom stack which is which is great. But the problem at the moment is if you want to move seamlessly from different national mapping agencies using the same spec, it's very difficult. Are you seeing any countries adopt your your kind of standard or your or, or your uh, your schema? And are, are people mapping to your schema yet? Or yeah, the yeah. The, the Luxembourg GeoPortal is directly using our schema and most of the Open Map tiles stack from their own data. Okay, so fantastic. It's directly the schema. Yeah. Oh, I'll, see if, I'll, I'll see if I can have a word with the guys in the UK to do the same because I think I think it's great. Yeah, it would be great because then the styles would be directly compatible. Yeah, yeah, great. Thank you. Yeah, and 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 the Cartographic Institute in Catalonia is doing the same. They are using the same schema. I'm also curious to know. Uh, why the theme is called layers in its vector tile? Because uh, I'm coming from leaflet, so I have a leaflet layers and then I have layers inside a vector tile. And the, the nomenclature of layers is so confusing nowadays. So for its, vector, for its layer in a vector tile, you can have a QGIS layer. And then when you have two vector tiles loaded, you have layers of layers. So why the name? Yeah, I guess you would have to ask the, the map box because they created this specification originally. But, uh, well, it's like the data layer, probably, which you combine into a visual layer. Yeah, it's kind of confusing sometimes. Yeah, I agree. We still have time, but uh, we also started the questions early. So I think we can close this session if nobody else is going to ask any questions. And please give it a round of applause, Peter. Thank you.